Let me explain something I want to make very clear. I do not like getting requests. I do not take requests. It goes on a simple logic. When one or two people tell me to review this specific thing, it tends to not be good or bad enough for a review. By the time there are enough people telling me to review this specific thing, provided I'm not going to review it anyway, I feel annoyed. The more annoyed I am because people keep bugging me to do it, the less likely I am to do it. Just writing the script tends to be so frustrating in a way that makes me abhor even thinking about the thing. And it forces me to be negative in a way that most of the time isn't fair. You wanna know why it's taking me so long to get back into reviewing MLP episodes? It's because every day I get more people asking when it's gonna come up, and each time it gets me closer to just going Chainsaw Massacre on any random episode, and I don't want to do that. Not even to the bad episodes. It's not people's fault, it's just the way I work. I tried to write the Amending Fences script, but with all the annoyance, I kept needing to buy bottle myself up, leading to the whole script being so stilted I had to chuck the whole damn thing. Keep in mind that episode is my favorite of season 5. I tried making it into an admirable animation so it would require less work than just putting in that strike system, but no, it wasn't working. It's not a light problem either. People were insanely asking me to review this particular episode like six months ago at least. So I'm going to have to establish something very important. I need to move at my own pace doing these videos. I review what I want, when I want, and review nothing else. If I'm truly interested in reviewing something, it tends to happen regardless of whether people request it or not. Emotion and a weird kind of attachment is an important part of what I do, not just on Admiral Animations. And I can't do that if it's what some other person wants me to do. I know it seems weird that I'm trying to tell people not to send me requests by caving into a request, but I figured that would be a good way to show the other reasons that I don't really like to heed to requests. And now, I promise I'm not just going to phone things in. I'm actually going to explain why it's very difficult to do a review on something solely because I got a request for it. If you want to be shown why it's a bad thing for me to review something solely because I got a bunch of requests for it, watch my Girls Gone Mild review. While I stand by what I said in that review, the episode didn't give me anywhere near enough to talk about, but a bunch of people wanted me to review it, so I reviewed it. So, how do I pick something to review? Well, the most important factor, or at least it used to be the most important factor, was personal experience. I need to have some kind of relationship with the episode. That would explain most of what I've reviewed, and there's still a lot left untouched in that category. But there are other reasons that I pick something up. Sometimes it has an issue that I want to talk about, or it's tangentially related to something else I'm doing. Sometimes it's out of morbid curiosity, like with Alan Gregory or Control-Alt-Delete. One criteria that comes up often is the weirdness factor. I like it when bad things are unique in their badness. It gives me a lot Lot to talk about. A large lack of that is why I dropped the G3 reviews, and I've been doing less and less Spongebob as I've gone on, although I'll probably keep a review here or there for old time's sake. But the weirdness factor. Weirdly bad things like Tentaclino or Doggy Poo are my favorite flavor of bad, and consequently, they get the best reviews out of me. On the other hand, when people give me requests, they tend to ask for things to review that I've already done something very, very similar to. Case in point, Rocket Monkeys. The only real difference between this show and Fanboy and Chum Chum is that that show is 3D and this show is 2D. That's definitely credence enough to hate the show, but I've already reviewed Fanboy and Chum Chum. What do you want me to say here that I haven't said there? I mean, the setup is different. It's about two annoying monkeys in space instead of two annoying monkeys in a water tower. Also, this one was made by Teletoon and aired on Nickelodeon. I'm pretty sure one of these days I'll review every single Teletoon show out of completionism. The sheer fact that they're probably the sole reason the Canadian animation has such an awful, awful reputation. While they have a couple of good or decent shows here or there, let me put it this way. In the 90s, they created Mega Babies. In the 2000s, they get birth to Johnny Test. In this decade, they created My Life Me. Not all of their shows are horrible. In fact, some are quite good. But after the advent of Flash animation, they went off the deep end big time. You can recognize the Teletoon show through terrible Flash animation, actually. And yeah, they usually do have an interesting level of bad that I love so much. But even that's waning. I wanted to do The Day My Butt Went Psycho. Pretty much everyone is a little ass. Like, every character is a butt. You'd be surprised, but that doesn't give me a lot to work with. Especially when I can just review Assy McGee from Adult Swim. The king of weird badness. The least of the weird shows, the one I get the most requests for, like I said, is Rocket Monkeys. Honestly, I'd rather review My Dad the Rockstar, a much better show with a lot less requests because at least that gives me more unique things to talk about. But to be fair, let's see what I can drum up for this one though. This show's resident Megward the Wizard is a banana newscaster named Lord Peel. Lord Peel. Their names, Wally and Gus. Who are they? Rocket Monkeys. What are they? The worst galactic monkeys ever, who should be banished, sent away, fired. You want to know why? Roll the tape. 
You know, the funny thing is this character introduction is in the second part of the last episode of the first season. Then we see the rocket monkeys destroying things, just like Fanboy and Chum Chum, and just like Spongebob and Patrick in their bad episodes. Hell, just like the breadwinners. Oh, except for the fact that they literally killed the oldest woman in the galaxy. Yep, these guys are murderers. It's not even inferred. They literally give someone a heart attack. These two are the heroes, by the way. You know, like, I've explained in so many other reviews how the episode gets the bad guys and the good guys confused because they think it's funny in some fucked up sense of the word. I'm assuming that the Rocket Monkeys are supposed to be like Jerry from Tom and Jerry, even though if we're going through that analogy, they've got the species thing backwards. Like I said before, if you're going to use Flash animation, you cannot get away with simple shapes. It looks cheap and lazy. Isn't that right, Pixel Pinky? Isn't that right, Johnny Test? Respect. Observation. The crowd was booing you. Bimo, what are you doing on Nickelodeon? Yep, other people are trying to rip off Adventure Time. Ahem. <clears throat> nah, everyone loves our monkey shenanigans. You do, right? Yes, but I'm programmed that way. The rest of the universe, not so much. Self-awareness that their comedy is horrible. Welcome back. Tonight's subject, who hates the rocket monkeys most? Our guests, me. You know, just because you make him look like the villain doesn't make him the villain. I could put demon horns on Mabel. That wouldn't make her the villain. Some director or something, I don't know, tells the banana that he's big. It doesn't really lead to anywhere. Lord Peel wants to humiliate the rocket monkeys, which the rest of the universe hates, apparently. Monkeys, the situation has become critical. I am overwhelmed with negative emails. Oh my god, that is the worst thing that could ever happen to anyone. Like, really? That kind of stuff could give someone PTSD. You gotta be careful with that shit. Holy fucking shit. No more. Fire those rocket monkeys. Throw Wally and Gus under the bus. You know, that sounds like you should heed some of them. They sound like legitimate criticism. And didn't someone else fund the space program? I mean, there is a legitimate concern to the validity of what you're doing. Wally, monkey up! Starting now, you and I are going to be on Hero Plus behavior. I mean, super serious. Oh, as an aside, since I already reviewed Return of Slade and Pygate Rules that his take on Let's Get Serious, which you should all watch, by the way, I don't think that there's any reason for me personally to review Let's Get Serious myself. Another episode I get lots of requests for. We're gonna look so good! Yes, but first, Rocket Monkey Wally, pants on. What? Who doesn't like monkey butt? Uh... Charming. Anyway, their task is to give food to the last orphan in wherever. At the orphanage, the banana jumps out of the basket and we get a burp joke. We get about three burp jokes. Yay! I think this is why Teen Titans Go! might actually have an audience. When the rocket monkeys slatter the banana, they decide to not take him to the hospital and nurse him back to help themselves. I'm pretty sure I've seen this setup before. Oh yeah, the fanboy and Jim Jam episode I reviewed specifically dealt with sickness. And, like I said, this was the episode specifically that people were requesting me to review. Five minutes into the 11 minute episode though, that's a pretty good place to start the actual plot. How did Spongebob do this joke better in its first season, about 15 years before you did it in your first season? Rocket Monkey Gus, this is your last chance to fix your approval rating. Gassy agents are Excuse supposed me, to be Artemis, competent. Excuse me, need more hot soup for our patient. He spills the soup again, right? Something else I wanted to review that no one requested was Stressed Eric, which I could have used to explain exactly the dichotomy of why jokes like this don't work. Because it spends more time on issues like this, and because it bumps up a boring torture porn story even further than this show does. ...to be helpful. Go away! I don't want your help! Yep, that sounds like something that Squidward says, like, verbatim. You see, I don't like to review something if I'm getting absolutely nothing new out of it. I know what'll make you feel better. SpongeBob! Oh god, no! Wow, they're not even trying. I don't even know what the Rocket Monkeys are trying to do. I mean, I assume they're trying to take an x-ray, but that's only my best guess. Oh, and the Rocket Monkeys use a rectal thermometer. This, this show is for kids, right? Seriously. I did a top 10 Squidward torture porns list because each individual one would give me so little to talk about. And that's another joke taken from Spongebob. Specifically, at the end of Suction Cup Symphony. For some reason, they were all in a studio the whole time, and the Rocket Monkeys get what the banana wanted in the end. Did you say my show got cancelled? The audience didn't like it, but the good news is, they love my new clients! You're a hit, boys! How would you like your own TV show? I would be angry if I hadn't seen this in so many bad Spongebob episodes. It's fucking Choir Boys, an episode that I already reviewed. Wasn't that riveting? 
I mean, I tried, but it's not easy to shoot new criticism at old material. I mean, for me to do that, the episode in question needs to go above and beyond. And I mean really above and beyond. And most of the things I get requests for are not in that category. I hope that I illustrated why I prefer not to do requests. Honestly, the best reviews I think I made are from shit that no one even knows about. Everything is alright Chill 